The Dallas Cowboys played like legit Super Bowl contenders on Monday night, and that's no surprise because they are legit Super Bowl contenders. The Cowboys slaughtered the Philadelphia Eagles. It was a total team effort, complimentary and brilliant football. Dak Prescott was superb. Dak dominated his first game in Dallas and shattering his ankle in Big D last October. He threw for three touchdowns and should have had another one on the ground if it wasn't for an odd and awful call. But what was really impressive, the meat and potatoes, the run game, the offensive line, the defense. Talk of Ezekiel Elliott's impending death, way premature. Zeke showed that familiar blend of power and speed with that incredible slicing and dicing. It was inspiring, and the defense came to play. And this is literally what we talked about all offseason on Time for Shine. The impact of Dan Quinn, a great defensive coordinator who has changed the culture, the scheme, and the play. Micah Parsons all over the field. Javon Diggs had a pick six. This is a total 180 from last year as we predicted. And look, I think the Rams are the best team in the NFL, and they were my NFC Super Bowl pick preseason. And I have them beating the Packers on Championship Sunday, and there's no reason for me to change it. But Dallas is in the same class here as Green Bay and Tampa Bay. Dallas is going to win the NFC East going away, despite Mike McCarthy's awful clock management. And last night was especially horrendous. We didn't call timeouts to get the ball back at the end of the first half. McCarthy's game management is the only issue early for Dallas. This is a different and dominant and balanced Cowboys team. Get used to it. You gotta be romantic about football. What a brilliant line. Perhaps only top today on Mad Dog Sports Radio when Aaron Rodgers told Pat McAfee that Sunday night was a rough night for the he-doesn't-care campers. Oh, rough, rough night. Nobody cares more. And no one is better at professional football than my guy, Aaron Rodgers. 37 seconds left. Zero timeouts, zero problems. Those throws to Devontae Adams were breathtaking. And I loved Rodgers' Tiger Woods-esque fist pump right there. Just a wild fist pump after he spiked the ball to stop the clock for this. Mason Crosby's 51-yard game-winning field goal. Rodgers was pumped. The celebration was unbelievable after the field goal. It was rightly wild. The pack is back. Let's be honest, they never left. Week one was a hot mess. It was one week and credit the Saints. The Packers beating San Francisco in San Francisco shows that the Packers are excellent. Fueled by the most talented quarterback in the history of the NFL, Aaron Rodgers. I have the Green Bay Packers as the second best team in the NFC behind the Rams. Rodgers was incredible. So was the offensive line. So was the defense. It was vastly improved, and that's a big deal. Rodgers is going to shred the Pittsburgh Steelers Sunday on CBS. The Packers are going to start the season 3-1. and one. Rough, rough time for the haters. Great to be romantic about Packers football. Tom Brady was brilliant last night on his Let's Go show on Sirius XM. He's not going to reminisce. He wants to win. This is obviously more than a game for all of us. You know what this is? It's an event. Tom Brady going back to Foxborough after two decades of uh, domination. That is as big and as juicy as it gets. But it is interesting and noteworthy that both the Patriots and the Bucs come into this one after a loss. And if there's anything that we know about both Brady and Bill Belichick, while we're going to all reminisce all week, it's very easy for these legendary winners to keep that focus on getting the train back on the track. But I am so fascinated for Brady versus Belichick after what they accomplished together forever. This was the greatest dynasty in the history of sports. It will never, ever be duplicated. It starts with the division titles, the double-digit win seasons, the championship game appearances, the Super Bowl appearances, and then the Lombardi trophies. I, I think it's rather insane to say one was more important than the other based upon last year and the change, but it's obviously clear that Tom Brady has won the divorce, wanting the change, winning the Super Bowl. And the 2021 Bucs are clearly better 
than the 2021 Patriots. Brady says he knows exactly what the most anticipated return ever is going to feel like. What a night game in Foxborough is going to feel like with the Patriots fans rooting for New England. And he's right. But New England fans obviously love, cherish, and respect Tom Brady. Obviously. They're going to cheer him out of the tunnel. They're going to cheer him when he's introduced and when he breaks the all-time passing yards mark on Sunday night, which is crazy. He's going to do it in Foxborough wearing a Buccaneers uniform. And then the Patriots fans are going to shrug when Brady beats Belichick on Sunday night. Starting at number five, my guy Matthew Stafford. My guy Matthew Stafford was simply phenomenal, terrific against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Throwing for 343 yards and four touchdowns. My guy Matthew Stafford now has nine touchdown passes this season. And his first three games are looking eerily similar to Kurt Warner's starts in 1999 for the Rams. And by the way, wouldn't be surprised to see if just like Warner and the Rams back then, if Stafford won the MVP, if the Rams won the Super Bowl. And here's what's sweet. And I picked the Rams to beat the Buccaneers on Sunday. This was the vision. You trade for Matthew Stafford for a big game like that against the defending champs, against the Buccaneers, to outscore Tom Brady. Those just bomb throws were majestic. Love that throw at the beginning of the second half to Deshaun Jackson. Love the rapport with Cooper Cup. My guy, Cooper Cup, without question, has been the best receiver in the NFL to start this season. My guy, Matthew Stafford playing for my guy Sean McVay, playing with my guy Jalen Ramsey, playing with my guy Aaron Donald. This is why the LA Rams, and there was a Hollywood feel and a legit home field advantage with celebs and diehard fans at the stadium over the weekend in LA. This is why the Rams are gonna be playing in the LA Super Bowl. This is why they make the trade, my guy Matthew Stafford. Number four, my guy Miles Garrett. Are you kidding me, Miles Garrett? Four and a half sacks of poor Justin Fields on Sunday, setting a single game franchise record for the Browns. I told you in the preseason, I wouldn't be surprised if my guy, Miles Garrett, 20 plus sacks this season. I wouldn't be surprised if my guy, Miles Garrett, sets the single season sack record. We've been waiting for the Browns defense to look like they're supposed to. This was an absolute clinic. My guy, Miles Garrett. Number three, guy from the weekend, my guy, Josh Allen. Bills Mafia. I told you my guy, Josh Allen, was going to carve up the Washington football team. He was going to absolutely smash them. And then you guys, Bills Mafia, smashing tables. Oh, he smashed them all right. 358 yards, four passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. It was my guy Josh Allen's fifth game with at least four passing touchdowns and at least 300 yards passing, passing my guy Jim Kelly for the most such games in Buffalo Bills history. Anytime you move past Jim Kelly in an all-time Bills ranking, that is amazing. I mean, first two weeks of the season, my guy Josh Allen stuck in the mud. I told you. Don't worry about my guy, Josh Allen, and don't get it twisted because of my guy, Josh Allen, and because of my guy, Sean McDermott's defense. This Buffalo Bills team is the best in the AFC. My guy, Josh Allen, is a superstar. My guy, Josh Allen. And number two, my guy, Brandon Staley. Are you kidding me? How about my guy, Brandon Staley, having the chutzpah, the intelligence, the gumption to go for it on fourth down consistently going up against Patrick Mahomes. Fourth and four, okay, you bring it back. Fourth and nine, or you draw a penalty, a couple of Herbert passes, and all of a sudden, bam, go ahead, score. Herbert to Mike Williams. That is unbelievable. The Chargers, look, they're two and one. They're going to make the playoffs. The division is ridiculously amazing, no question about it. But I love my guy, Brandon Staley. They needed an attitude adjustment. They needed someone smart, someone who can manage a game, run the clock. Obviously, Anthony Lynn failed in those categories, and I like my guy, Anthony Lynn, a lot personally. Years ago, I voted for him coach of the year, but 
you know, he just couldn't manage a game and it was that self-fulfilling doom of what could go wrong would go wrong. And I love my guy, Brandon Staley. He said, you know what? To beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead, we need to be smart. We need to be aggressive. This was good for football. This was good for analytics. This was good for emotion. My guy, Brandon Staley. And how about my number one guy from this past weekend in the NFL? My guy, Justin Tucker. A 66-yard field goal? Are you kidding me? My guy, Justin Tucker, joined it in off the crossbar. Wow. Longest field goal in NFL history. Justin Tucker is the best kicker ever. Sorry, Adam Vinatieri, it's true. All this guy does is make kicks and bomb game winners. My guy, the great Justin Tucker. We were watching that on Sunday. We went ballistic in the shine house. That right there, that's why you love sports. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.